Hello everyone, happy Monday. So if you're just on the last live, we're trying we're trying this again. My friend Carson and I are planning on going live, but we're trying to figure out the technical difficulties here. Uh, I think this is her first time ever going live on Instagram. So we're gonna we're gonna try this second time around. If we can't get it, then we'll we'll figure it out. But let's see if this works this time. Alright, let's see if they pop up. But yeah, today we're going to be talking about short form video. So let's see if we can pull her up. But yeah, today we're going to be talking about short form video. In the meantime, while we're waiting Carson for Carson to hop on, um, do I have to be live on mine first? No, just join. Just tap on, on mine. Sorry, we're going back and forth on Facebook Messenger right now trying to figure this out. So you get to see a lot of behind the scenes of how it actually is to try and run a business in the background. Lots of technical difficulties constantly pop up. So let's see if, okay, all right, so they're on. Now I'm gonna send over the invite, okay? You can also hit request at the bottom. I know you're here. Oh, okay, I, I, see, I see it pop up, except let's see if this works. Oh my god, we got it! We did it! Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That was quite the process. <laughs> it happens. I know if you're not used to it, it's kind of confusing when you first do it the first time. Yeah, because I've been live on TikTok before and it's a completely different setup. So thank you for your patience. I'm very excited to be here. <laughs> no worries, you're fine. Yeah, TikTok is a whole different ballgame. So <laughs> and yeah, I'm very glad. Glad you could you could join us. So for anyone who's tuning in from my audience, do you mind telling them a little bit about you and what you do? Yeah, for sure. So Olivia and I are in the same mentorship program together, and that's kind of how we met each other. And um, you know what we specialize in is TikTok and short form videos like Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Idea Pins on Pinterest. And we really help people to gain visibility, brand awareness, and really help them explode through short form video. Yeah. I know we've done a few summits together. We've, I think we've done a few other collabs. We might've done a TikTok live. I don't know if we ever did a TikTok live. I don't think we have yet because we are very bad at going live on TikTok. But yes, we've done many other things. <laughs> But yeah, we've done multiple summits before. We it was actually just two. It was just two. It wasn't multiple, but <laughs> we've done two summits before, uh, where we chatted about like literally everything short form video. Um, I know that one of the big topics that you talked on was controversy. Yes, that yes, was I'm a big fan of controversy. <laughs> yeah. So I was wondering if you want to talk a little bit more about that because I don't think anyone who I've gone live with yet has talked about controversies. So. Yeah. Sure, I would love to. So, you know, from the time we started TikTok, you know, one of the reasons that we were able to grow accounts so fast was we were able to incorporate controversy into the video. So a lot of the times, you know, we have this thought that controversy is a bad thing. It has to be about something big like politics or religion or, you know, where we stand on different topics. And that's not necessarily true. You can, you know, you can use controversy healthily. Like, I mean, I'm sure you guys have all seen the debate if you just put pineapples on your pizza before. And just incorporate, like finding out what different opinions are within your industry, if you're a brand or a business, or even if you're a personal account, you know, expressing some of those opinions um, is a really good starting place to really, you know, attract people to start chiming in and engaging on your content. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a game changer when you can use it the right way, especially on TikTok. Yeah. Because people do it and stitch those videos and it just boosts your original video so much. Oh, it's insane. Like the amount of people that have gone from like next to no followers to like hundreds of thousands just from posting some sort of form of controversy is like insane. Yeah, I honestly think that's probably one of the secret hacks with short form video marketing. Like you can post like, here's three tips for X, Y, and Z, and like, you know, all this like educational content, but the moment that you like create a video like that, that's somewhat controversial, and it doesn't have to be like bad controversial, just like people have mixed opinions on it, like, oh my God, your video is gonna take off and it's, it's a game changer for your business. Yeah, 
We even have one client and we posted for her about how PDFs are no longer the way of the world. She did a whole, like a whole segment on why she doesn't believe PDFs are the best resource for people to get information from anymore. And that video took off so much for her. And it was like, wow, we did not see this coming, but people had opinions on PDFs. Yeah, it's a great way to get people into your world. Like you reach so many different audiences that you never thought you'd, you'd get, especially on TikTok. Totally. Yeah, 100%. So speaking of TikTok, you guys, you, you and Ben, so for anyone who doesn't know, Carson and her husband actually do the whole social media game together. Um, you and Ben have been on TikTok for, what, two years now? Yeah, we've been on TikTok for a little over two years, but we really started bringing it in to, you know, help businesses and brands develop about two years ago. So what if, what if you seen as like the biggest changes since like COVID TikTok because I think a lot of business owners get on here and they start trying to do things that worked back during COVID and they don't really work anymore yeah so what, what, what have you think of like some of the biggest changes that have happened you know well and like to start off I think you know one of the biggest mindset shifts that people and businesses have to go through is you know back in the day when TikTok started off it was really like a lot of dancing and doing trends and you know that was kind of where TikTok started from and as time has progressed like it's become a place where you can attract your communities you can develop value and education and it's transitioned a lot, like not to say that trends don't have a really important place on TikTok, but they've definitely shifted in regards to what that actually looks like. Yeah, I agree. I feel like I've learned more on TikTok, like just like random like fun facts and like, I don't know, I've learned so much on TikTok than like anywhere else in the world. Like I went to college for four years and I feel like I learned more about like the real world on TikTok and just like life hacks than anywhere else. But yeah, I def oh, yeah. No, yeah it's, you and like that's a hundred percent it. You know, like even there's like the TikTok hearings going on in the states and whatnot. And you know, one of the the biggest things that TikTok is for is like that freedom of expression and stuff. So what you see on TikTok a lot of the time is that real world, you know, like news coming in from like citizens filming and, you know, the life hacks and it just, the algorithm learns what you like so freaking fast that it really does. It feeds you those life hacks. It feeds you, you know, maybe places that you've always kind of wondered about. Like there's so many different things that algorithm can do. It's crazy. Yeah. And like your point about like stuff that you just don't see normally, like in the news, like, I'm, this is a controversial topic, but, yeah. <laughs> like, there were a bunch of, like, news events, at least in the States, that happened. I think there was, like, a train derailment in Ohio, and I, I forget, like, all the details with it, but, like, nobody knew about it except for, like, the local people until it was announced on TikTok. Like, regular news agencies weren't covering it. It was just, like, everyday people in their homes being like, oh, my God, like, can I drink the water here? And, like, sharing this online, and that's how it blew up. Like, it was just kind of covered, like, under the rug in yeah. regular news agencies like Fox and ABC and stuff like that. But it's crazy how TikTok just, like, pulls up everything. There's, like, so much freedom with it. Oh, totally. And, I, I, like, and I mean, I mean, to some degree, like, you still have to be careful, <laughs> like, what yeah. you're seeing. Because, I mean, some of it, like, it's crazy some of the stuff that seems so real, and it's not. But 100% agree with, like news events and current events and things happening in different locations and cities and countries like you learn a lot of stuff from seeing like citizens actually posting about it and it's pretty crazy yeah or like the protests in france like those were all live streamed on tiktok yeah that was insane yeah yeah so you're from canada so do you see like i guess i've, I've always had this question but i've never asked you do you see a lot of like u.s TikToks like or is it mostly like is it regionized like how does that work with you guys um you know I think it kind of starts out as very localized until it gets to start to understand you know what you look for like Ben and I we work with a lot of clients in the, the states and our personal interests <clears throat> kind of you know extend over multiple countries so what we see is a bit of everywhere from the world but when we do start off and even when we start off on client accounts we do see it more localized until you know it really starts understanding what you're you're 
for. Like if you like learning and seeing people talk about everything Canada and you keep watching those videos, the TikTok algorithm will make sure that you see everything Canada. But yeah, Ben and I have a little bit of a taste for everywhere in the world. And so I get to see a bit of everything. That's cool. Yeah, I was always curious. I'm like, I don't know if it's it's like, um, like on Instagram, at least the way that Instagram is set up is you, they feed it by location. So like, I don't get a lot of like, outside of the US TikToks, which is or Instagram reels, which is interesting. So but that's kind of cool that you guys get a full world view. So yeah. what are, what are some of the clients that you work with, I guess, like going back into like your business and stuff like that? Who do you who do you work with on TikTok? Um, you know, we kind of work in a few different industries. So we've worked with e -com, we've worked with service-based industries, we've worked with um, people who are looking to go more into a personal brand. So we've kind of delved into a bunch of different industries on TikTok. But you know, we're really passionate about helping like, I think there's a difference between, you know, the brands and businesses who just like, you know, want to get on there and make lots of money versus the ones that are like extremely passionate about what it is that they're offering or serving the world. So, um, you know, that's kind of where we've niched down to, into is really finding those passionate, um, purposeful businesses and brands. Yeah, no, that's, I was I was on a live with Jen the other day. And she was asking me like, what types of brands I work with. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I feel like with you, Jen, it's like all of these like HVAC, like electrical, like brick and mortar types of businesses. But I think a lot of us as service providers, like we just target people who we kind of vibe really well with. Yeah. And like, that was my response. I'm like, if I have a good vibe with you, like going back and forth, communicating like over email and like if we hop on a discovery call, like I would, I'd rather work with you than like, and try and learn your industry yes. than special specializing in a certain industry. Oh, wow. Wow. I love that. I might, I might have to steal that line from you. Cause when people ask us like what industries we specialize in, I'm like, I don't, I never know like how to like clearly say that, but I like that. But if we vibe, then we can work together. <laughs> I, I think it's been, a, it's worked out really well for me. Like, cause I've worked with everyone from like finance to mental health. And it's just, I feel like the common trait that I've found among all of those, and if you can have success with all of those, it's just the way that you interact with the client. Yeah, 100%. Like, that's like, yeah, 100%. Yeah, if they're open-minded, like, especially when it comes to TikTok and, like, creating videos and stuff like that, like, you need to be open-minded and willing to try new things. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So when you're working with clients, what is kind of your process I guess so what do you I know with some people the the client films all, all the videos and then they get sent back to you and you edit them or you guys just more in, like the hands-on with like strategy and stuff like that yes yeah, so kind of transitioning a bit so there's only so much capacity we have for um, done for you clients but when we do work with people and do the whole full shebang the whole management um typically what they either have is a bank of content whether it be like youtube videos or podcasts or maybe they have you know folders with videos and photos and they just send us all of that information and then we learn about their goals what they're trying to achieve and then we create the content we manage the account we edit the videos we do all of the the stuff to help them reach their goals on tiktok and then um we're kind of transitioning more into strategy and consulting and this is where we come on and we really just help you, you know, dive into what your goals are and how you can actually achieve them through TikTok and short form video. So yeah, there's a couple different ways that we work with our clients. Yeah, I think one of my favorite ways of working with clients is definitely the strategy and consulting side. Just like doing that one on one sort of stuff is always way better than doing the nitty gritty like video editing. Not that I don't like it, but it's I don't know. I like doing the more like human connections and like talking with people. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Like it's always good to have like a bit of the, like the know as to what's going on with the app and everything else, but the strategy and stuff, it just lets you be so creative and I don't know, just, it's a lot of fun. Oh, hold on. I think I'm getting an incumbent call. So I just want to make sure that goes away before. <laughs> okay. I think we're good. Oh my god, that's like the one downside of going live on these apps is if I get like calls or notifications come in, it's like everything just like freezes up. 
I think we're good. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you okay. are good. Well, awesome, awesome. All right, cool, cool, all right. I just want to make sure we're good. It happened to be on TikTok once, too. I was live, and it was, like, back in, like, the prime TikTok days, where I had, like, hundreds of people coming onto my live at that point, and all of a sudden, it froze up. Because I get an incoming call from my fiance, and I'm like, I can't talk to you right now. Like, I might potentially be making a lot of money going live right now, and I can't do this. So, um, so don't call me. Yeah, I know. I, I always have to tell him every single time before I go live. I'm like, I'm about to go live. Please don't message me for, like, the next hour. Because if you message me or try and call me, like, I'm screwed. <laughs> like, people are going to leave and not want to come back on. <laughs> oh, no. It's all good. And you... I know that you have a couple different TikToks or Instagrams, right? Like you have one for your dogs too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I have, I have multiple social media accounts. I have my personal Instagram account, which is just Kelleher Olivia. I like okay. barely ever post on there. And then I have this one, which is like the business one. And then I have my dog's Instagram and my dog's TikTok. That's and I love posting on my dog's TikTok account. It's mostly just like, testing out things and seeing what works and just having fun with the app uh, before I try and make changes on like client accounts or on my own account. Yeah, no, that's so fun. I, it's so fun to um, posting about your animals like we do it with our horses and it's a good time. Yeah, I, I think it's, those videos always get so much more engagement too because I, who doesn't love animals to begin with? So anytime I like put my dog, even if it's on my personal account, if I like have a if I have Doug in the background on the video, everyone's like, oh my god, can you post more videos about the dog? Like, he's so <laughs> cute, like all this stuff. So that's a big engagement tip as well. If you're struggling with short form videos, like include animals inside of your posts. If you have pets or horses or whatever it is, like that stuff 100%. always performs really well. <laughs> oh, it does so good. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. <laughs> so you guys, do you work with um, any equine people horse people like I, I don't know like, the right terminology for it but like is that like an area that you help people in with TikTok yeah so okay first of all for those of you that don't know equine means horse and most people don't know that so that's amazing oh really <laughs> yeah yeah so we do um so my background is where I came from is I was a facilitator for this um programming called equine assisted learning so what we did was we helped people to develop life skills while working with horses on the ground. So it wasn't therapy, there was no riding involved. It was all just really helping people build solid life skills. So um, I facilitated those programs for a long time and then became an instructor for a international program that you know teaches other people to bring this to their communities. And with that, I actually helped like hundreds of horse business owners um, around the globe to grow their business through social media. So we still have um, a couple of horse clients right now. Um, but for the most part, now we've kind of like spread out across a few different industries, but my, I'm still very passionate about that industry. That's really cool. I didn't I didn't know you did that. Yeah, it was it was so much fun. And then um, I kind of got the entrepreneur bug where I wanted to go off and start something on my own but it was it was magical it was amazing that's really really cool yeah is that yeah. something like you'd want to do in the future like make a business around that um I don't know like I I hands down would always love running the programs like the people that we got to work with and the organizations that we got to work with was phenomenal but I really was passionate about people getting the word out to their community so that they could actually provide the service and I could just help them get their, their name out there. That's awesome. I, I, yeah. That is really cool. I've, I've only heard of a few people who've ever done that before yeah. and I didn't know much about it. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. It's super cool. Like it's, yeah, if you guys ever have the chance to do it, like there's so many different variations of equine therapy and equine assisted learning out there. But um, the ones where you like actually get to build like solid life skills, they're so much fun. Like anytime you get to spend time with a horse is fun. So I'm not taking away from any program whatsoever, but just the ones that we got to run that I know about personally, oh man, they're a hoot. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, horses always scare me. Like I live near a horse farm and they're so cute to like look at when I, I drive by. I'm like, oh my God, they're so beautiful. But 
I don't know. I've only been up close with one before, and I'm, it's just so massive. They kind of scare me. <laughs> yeah, that and it's funny because um, like a lot of our clients that we work with are non-horse people too. So being around horses are extremely intimidating, but it is. It's pretty. It's pretty powerful once you start building that relationship with them and understanding how they communicate so that you can feel more safe around them. And it's, it's, it's such a cool journey. I love, I love watching new people come around horses and just build those bonds and get more comfortable and confident around them. But I hear you, they are very large animals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Rachel, I think Rachel went through some sort of um, therapy like that, right? She did the equine therapy. Yeah. Yeah, she did. I think. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, like there's so many different kinds. I mean, I know this is veering off of TikTok a little bit. Yeah, no, like, I don't know. I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like depending on, you know, like what your journey is and like what your goals are and like what you're trying to achieve, like the equine therapy is super solid when you're actually needing to delve more into that, like, you know, that therapy piece too. But then there's like team building activities. Like it pretty much goes from like anybody who is open to growth of some form there's a program out there for you hmm. yeah that's very cool it's very cool i'll have to look into it yeah. not, that, not that i need it but i'll have to like look into it more because i don't want to take up more of your time asking you like horse questions no, it's, it's okay i probably rambled on too long about it anyways <laughs> no it's just it's really cool because it's like i think a lot of people overlook the power of like animals and therapy especially and it's like like i don't know what i'd do without my dog here my like, he, he keeps me sane during the days running my online business from home when I'm, like, as he's moving the door. <laughs> like, when I'm running my online business from home and there's nobody else to talk to, it's just, it's so nice to have him in the background, so. Yeah, and just, it, they kind of, like, ground you and just keep you a little bit sane and just provide you with comfort. And, yeah, no, I could go on all day about animals. <laughs> I know. We'll, we'll have to have, like, a whole separate conversation about the animals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, back to TikTok. <laughs> What are some strategies that you're seeing right now that are really working? Yeah, so, you know, there has been a big transition over time. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Alex Hermosi, yeah. but his style of video popped up and it's just like, it's a lot more, you know, professional looking, you know, professional captions and it's, it's a very strong strategy that people are definitely jumping onto. Um, however, you know, like one of the things and one of the strategies that we've seen stick true since the beginning is TikTok is a place where people come and they want to see like an authentic, different version of you, like, you know, a more personable version. And so, you know, don't get so caught up on it needs to look very professional. It needs to be perfect. People love the raw, real you that you are. And I think that stands true no matter like how big your company is, how, no matter like how well known your company is, there's a way to bring that personal piece into your content. And I think that's one of the biggest strategies for all of our clients is just, you know, keeping it personal, keeping it real. You can still educate, you can still provide value. You can still be professional on camera, but allowing people to see a little bit of an inside of what it's like behind the scenes. Yeah, no, I agree. I think the biggest difference with TikTok in comparison to every other platform is like, it's just so raw and real. Mm -hmm. And people are gravitated towards that. Like, yeah. people are gravitated towards the weirdest, like most random things. But the biggest is just like authenticity and just like being yourself and like, you know, it doesn't have to be this perfectly polished video, even those those do perform well, sometimes. Totally. Like, don't think that you have have to go out and create this like Adobe Premiere Pro video and spend five to six hours on a 60 second TikTok clip yeah. because that's just not the case like you can just sit down like we are right now and just film in 10 seconds. Yeah I know and it, it's amazing like I mean and even like for an insight like even just seeing your background and seeing like the pictures that you have and your plants and everything like it just it's so cool to little, get a little bit of an idea of who someone is just by you know, just like the small things. And yeah, I don't know. I think that's one of the biggest tips that we definitely have for people or brands or businesses starting out on TikTok, or even if they're having a struggle growing on TikTok, is bring that personal authentic piece back in because people love seeing it. Yeah. What I always 
tell people is, especially if they're doing talking head videos, mm -hmm. is pretend you're on FaceTime with, like, your best friend or your mom. Yeah. Like, the way that you're talking, because I think that's another big holdup for people is they might not have professionally edited videos, but they speak like they're speaking in, like, a conference or something like that. They, they speak like they're a robot. Like, just speak like you're talking like, to another person behind the camera. Oh, yeah. No, that is an amazing tip. And I actually think you gave us this tip as well. But for those of you who are speaking on camera, like, doing the talking head ones that Olivia is talking about, um, and I really do believe this was you that told us this, but you make a post-it note if you have trouble oh, remembering yeah what to say and you put it just below your camera as you're filming and it just it really helps you to kind of guide what you're saying yeah that that is one of my biggest tips for people who are starting out and they're like, they don't know what to say or they're like trying to memorize their lines like if you just take a sticky note and you put it right below the camera right here like nobody can see it but you can see it and you can just like write in big text and stuff like that and then just do like quick short takes totally <laughs> yeah no it's a genius tip <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it helped me a lot when I first started out because I was I was trying to remember like like three tips or something like that and I'm like, oh I can't remember what the third tip is and I don't wanna I had to stop the video and go back and it was just a pain in the butt. So yeah, definitely try the, the sticky note tip if you guys are struggling with it. <laughs> yeah. Is there any other questions that you want to know about TikTok or that you want your audience to know about TikTok? Um I don't know. I mean just I like doing these as more as like a casual conversation and just kind of going back and forth and stuff like that. So if there's yeah. anything else you really want to share, like whether that's about your journey on TikTok and like some of your like client wins and what you've been doing with your clients. Um, but yeah, I normally just do the Instagram lives to get a different perspective because I think a lot of the people who I get on here, we're kind of in the same realm, but we all have different specialties. Like when Jen came on, she talked a lot about the brick and mortar stores and she was talking about Facebook ads and like, you know, the way that they're targeting and stuff like that. And it turned into this whole other conversation. So if there's anything else you really want to share, like I, we're, we're fair game here. It's not super professional. Yeah. No, I love this. This is, oh my gosh, I'm just stuttering so bad today, but this has been so much fun so far. I've been loving it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you use any specific like editing tools for TikTok or do you normally edit for your clients in app? Um um, we, depending on, you know, who they're trying to reach and the kind of vision that they're trying to give to the world, um, you can edit on TikTok amazingly. Like there's so many features on there for editing. So highly recommend starting out with that one. But then there's other like apps you can download your phone, like InShot or CapCut, which are both really great editing tools. And then if you're like an advanced video editor, definitely like the Premiere Pro, um, and stuff like that will definitely help you take it to the, to the next level. Yeah. I love using CapCut. CapCut has a desktop version too, and that's where I edit all of my YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been trying it out, and I'm still a little bit of a newbie to it, but I really like it. Yeah, it like syncs up really nicely with TikTok too. You can pull a lot of trending sounds on there. So what I used to have to do is download like an example video and then extract the audio, and it was like an extra five steps. Which probably only took like two or three minutes, but it was just extra time I didn't want to do. <laughs> and what's nice about CapCut is you can just like save the audio on TikTok and then it downloads right to CapCut. Wow. Well, I didn't know that. So that's really cool. Yeah. New, new yeah. Fun fact for you. Use that yeah. in your editing. <laughs> yeah. No, that's so fun. And then CapCut has like a bunch of different uh, like filters and fun things that you can use too. So yeah. yeah. And okay, I was going to say so. For most of my life, like I'm Ben is the video for sure editor and I can do it, but I can edit on TikTok really good. I can edit on InShot really good. But when it comes to the more complex things, that's definitely like Ben's zone of genius. Um, and so I've been using iMovie for like pretty much like forever and nothing has changed on there. I swear in 20 years. <laughs> like, I know. <laughs> iMovie has stayed the same. They have not edited. They have not upgraded that feature at all. No. Oh, and like the templates are the same that they were like literally like it honestly probably like 15 years ago <laughs> yeah i know when you're making like vlogs and stuff and like i remember when i was a kid I'd, like <laughs> we used to do like stupid music videos and like just <laughs> we used to edit an iMovie and it i remember it's like three months ago my sister was making a vlog for when i came home for i think it was new year's and she was editing the vlog at iMovie and i'm like this looks the exact same as when we were like making music videos as kids like all these features are 
you'd think with like all these new apps out there they'd try and make iMovie <laughs> a little bit better and so many people still use it it's so simple I know like it's such an easy platform like it just maybe it like I feel like it could be a movement on TikTok for iMovie to <laughs> up their game a little bit <laughs> hashtag upgrade iMovie yeah. <laughs> It's true, though. It's so weird. Like, you'd think that Apple would be ahead of times with that, but they're really not. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so glad you were able to come on today. Um, for anyone who's tuning in from my audience or tunes in on the podcast when this comes out later, is there, where's, like, the best place to find you and Ben? Yeah, so there's a couple different places. Um, one of them is our TikTok account, and it's the at symbol Scooter Social, S-K-U-T-E-R-S-O-C-I-A-L. Um, and so on there, if you're looking to grow on TikTok, if you're looking for tips for TikTok, we give you like everything that we learn about our clients' accounts, we share on there. So there's so much gold on there. And then um, if you want more in-depth educational videos, we are also on YouTube at Ben and Carson, K-A-R-S-Y-N. So yeah, there's a couple different places you can find us. Awesome. Yeah. Um, how, how has the YouTube journey gone for you guys? I remember you reaching out a while back. How has it gone? Yeah, how's, how's the whole YouTube thing going? It it's, it's really like, I don't know, YouTube is fun once you get into the swing of things and you kind of like, you know, start creating content for it. It is, it's, I think it's, there's some real power to it. We're at a place now where we're putting out content and we kind of want to up level it to the next level. So we're going to get a little bit of extra help with that piece. But I think that, you know, if you're creating content on TikTok or on Instagram and you want, you have, you know, the idea that you want to grow your YouTube channel one day, just put those videos onto YouTube shorts and, you know, just at least start helping yourself on that channel to start building an audience. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, definitely take those TikTok videos, you guys, and throw them over to YouTube Shorts, because that seems to be, like, the second biggest platform right now for any sort of video. But, yeah, if you guys want to go give Ben and Carson a follow at Scooter Social, and then do you, I know, I like to ask if anyone has any, like, freebies or, like, any resources or anything like that as well before we hop off. Yes, we do have some freebies, and inside of the freebies is how to optimize your TikTok profile, there is 97 free hooks that we've tried and tested that we have inside of this. And then there is also our secret posting checklist, which is everything that we do for ourselves and our clients before we ever even hit that post button. And so, yeah. That's pretty juicy. I will make sure to leave the link to that inside of the description. And yeah, thank you so much for hopping on. Thank you for having me. And sorry about the, the showing um, up fashionably late. You're <laughs> Good, you're good. Technology is ever evolving and changing and it gets confusing, so <laughs> no worries. But yeah, have a great rest of your week. You too. We will see you soon. Thank you Bye. guys. Bye.